Hello, and welcome to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Coastal Resources Division public meeting on oyster mariculture gear in lease locations. In this presentation, we will give a brief overview of Georgia's shellfish program, including regulatory partners, a few industry statistics, and current methods of commercial shellfish harvest. Next, we will discuss the introduction of subtitle oyster mariculture and potential lease sites. A question and answer period will be held at the end of this presentation. As a member of the Interstate Shellfish Sanitation Conference, which includes members from state and federal regulatory agencies, the Coastal Resources Division, CRD, Shellfish Program utilizes the National Shellfish Sanitation Program, NSSP, model ordinance to regulate Georgia's shellfish industry. CRD is a primary authority responsible for a variety of activities vital to sustaining Georgia's shellfish industry, described in further detail on the following slides. A primary responsibility of the shellfish and water quality program is the classification of shellfish growing areas. Growing areas are established by sanitary surveys, which utilize the results of monthly water sampling at 82 trend sites throughout the Georgia coast. Water samples are processed at the in-house laboratory to ensure bacteria levels are within acceptable ranges to harvest shellfish for human consumption. The Shellfish and Water Quality Program is also responsible for identifying and leasing state water bottoms suitable for commercial shellfish harvest operations. Commercial operations on both state and private harvest areas are permitted annually by the Department to ensure consistency with state and federal law. The Department encourages the use of best management practices to ensure water bottoms are being used safely, productively, and sustainably. As an NSSP requirement, all commercial shellfish harvesters must complete a harvester education program provided by the department. This training ensures harvesters are educated in the safe harvest and handling of product intended for human consumption. CRD permits authorized harvesters and coordinates with law enforcement to help prevent theft of product or harvesting by individuals without harvester education. Another role of the shellfish program is to oversee the maintenance and enhancement of recreational harvest areas to create harvest opportunities for the general public. Maps can be found online at coastalgadnr.org forward slash recreational fishing for further detail. Due to the risk of severe illness and death linked to the consumption of raw shellfish, the industry is highly regulated by a number of agencies. The other agencies included in Georgia's shellfish program include the Georgia Department of Agriculture, the Georgia DNR Law Enforcement Division, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The Department of Ag is responsible for regulating the handling and storage of seafood products in addition to certifying seafood dealers. The Law Enforcement Division enforces the official code of Georgia, Title 27, Chapter 4, Article 4, Part 4, in addition to any other rules and regulations pertaining to shellfish. The United States Army Corps of Engineers provides federal permitting of mariculture operations in all navigable waters. Currently, there are 16 commercial harvest areas permitted throughout the state of Georgia. A majority of the shellfish product harvested is made up of wild oysters and farm-raised clams. Since the early 2000s, clam landings have increased significantly due to the introduction of clam mariculture, as seen to the chart on the right. Georgia law passed in 2020 has established new rules and regulations to support the introduction of oyster mariculture. With this new foundation, the state aspires to observe a similar growth in the oyster industry as witnessed with clams. Oyster mariculture is the production of oysters in confinement utilizing gear placed on water bottoms or floating on the surface of the water column. This process is utilized to produce single oysters, a product marketed towards high-end retailers. Oyster mariculture on the intertidal water bottoms is very labor-intensive and tide-dependent. However, the use of subtidal floating gear has been shown to be less labor-intensive and provide an indefinite working window in regards to tides. This process allows the oysters to remain in the most productive layer of the water column, which promotes faster growth of the product. The gear used in oyster mariculture also protects the product from predation pressures. This slide provides demonstrations of a few gear types commonly utilized in subtidal mariculture operations. The pictures on the top right show examples of floating cages, while the picture on the bottom left provides a schematic and an image of a floating bag. The remaining photos on the bottom right illustrate mariculture operations using flip farm technology. The use of these gear types for oyster mariculture provides a variety of environmental and socioeconomic benefits to the state of Georgia. One of the most important ecosystem benefits of this process is the amount of water filtration the oysters would provide as filter feeders. 
it is estimated that one oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water in one day. Filtering such large quantities of water removes excess nutrients from the environment, reduces bacteria levels in the water column, and results in higher water clarity. In addition, the use of spawning oysters in the mariculture process enhances wild oyster reefs in the vicinity and can even result in the growth of new oyster beds. Increasing wild oyster populations often plays a role in decreasing erosion, increasing fish habitat, and providing storm protection for estuary shorelines, not to mention the potential for increased populations for harvesting. Oyster mariculture also has a variety of social and economic impacts. The activity provides sustainable, low-impact protein sources, one of the few farming techniques that has a positive impact on the environment. It can also provide jobs and stimulate a local economy. Additionally, the increasing popularity of oyster farming has the potential to increase tourism, which can provide a boost to local farms and restaurants. Oyster mariculture also has its challenges, many of which have come to attention with its introduction in other states. The allocation of public land and water for private use has the potential for impacts to navigation, recreation, and residential view sheds. Additionally, siting harvest areas are often restricted by law and have site-specific permitting requirements. The gear utilized can also impact threatened or endangered species and their critical habitats. Finally, compliance and enforcement can be difficult when harvest areas are widely dispersed throughout remote areas, making it difficult for law enforcement to patrol the areas in an effort to prevent theft and encourage safe harvesting techniques. In an effort of due diligence, CRD has taken many precautions to address those challenges. DNR board rule has set requirements for leasing siting as follows. Any boundary of subtitle water bottom lease shall not be within the following. 150 feet of a federal project, 50 feet of an existing commercial, community, or private dock, and 50 feet of a shoreline at mean low water. Leases must also be compatible with the following. Critical habitat for marine, threatened, or endangered species, bait shrimping zones, and heritage preserves. Before citing a subtitle water bottom lease, the department shall evaluate the other conditions, such as areas with known pre-existing or historical commercial, recreational, and private uses of the waterway, areas where property owners may exercise riparian rights to construct docks or marinas, and areas of dynamic shorelines and shoaling. In addition, CRD would like to implement subtitle leases in mariculture zones. Mariculture zones are a type of lease configuration where leases are placed near one another with easements left for navigation. An example from Florida can be found on the right of the slide. This image also provides aerial photography of a few different gear types deployed with different strategies. This differs from more traditional individual leasing configurations, which often result in long chains of floating gear placed alongside stream banks, of which a few examples from South Carolina are displayed on the left of the slide. The implementation of the Mariculture Zone concept addresses many of the concerns and challenges presented when using floating gear for subtitle mariculture. Keeping all of these activities in one area minimizes navigational hazards in multiple ways. Similar to other areas that contain navigational hazards, mariculture zones can be placed on navigational charts to aid boaters. Also, large quantities of gear and signage in one location is more obvious to boaters on the water. The establishment of mariculture zones avoids the placement of small operations in hard to see areas, which could be quite dangerous. Concentrating all activity in one area also minimizes conflicts of use such as viewshed impacts and reduced accessibility to stream banks and fishing habitat. Additionally, establishing mariculture zones eases the vetting and permitting process for the regulatory agencies and potential farmers alike. State and federal requirements can be evaluated together in one area rather than separately, and public feedback can be obtained in a smoother process. Mariculture zones should also help address theft and safety concerns since more people will be in open areas visible to many, while also making it easier for law enforcement to patrol. Potential Georgia mariculture zones shall be cited based on the criteria described previously. Once identified, proposed areas will be shared with the public to garner comments and feedback. When more than one potential mariculture zone has been identified within a growing area, public comment will be used by the department to help select the least impactful location within a growing area. This is a map of the first proposed mariculture area in Georgia. It is located in McIntosh County on Mud River about 800 feet off the coast of Sapelo Island. This zone is about 120 acres and will contain three 10-acre leases upon the first round of lease allotment. Leases will be buffered by at least 50 feet 
with an easement channel of at least 100 feet through the center of the mariculture zone. This will ensure that navigation at low water is possible for any vessel in that area. The remaining suitable area within the mariculture zone will be leased at a future date depending on demand, bathymetry, public feedback, and cooperation with other regulatory agencies. Questions and comments will now be addressed by CRD staff for the following 30 minutes. Topics shall pertain to the following aspects. Mariculture zones, lease locations, potential conflicts of use, size of easement channels, and types of gear utilized. Written comments will be accepted until April 2, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. The address and email of correspondence is provided at the bottom of the slide. We look forward to hearing from you.